Hi, good afternoon and welcome to uh, the Nebraska Library Commission's Community Needs Response Planning Workshop. I am Krista Porter, the Library Development Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission. I am um, in charge of this uh, program, our Community Needs Response Planning Training, which is part of our library accreditation program public library accreditation program um, along with a few other things here at the commission so um today we are um and on the on the line with me um assisting i will say is also scott shilders who is the director of the southeast library system um southeast library regional library system here in nebraska uh, scott is only on um he'll be commenting in typing in our, in our chat section here. Uh, he's got a uh, laryngitis of some sorts and he can't talk. <laughs> so uh, he will be on um, remotely as, as best as he can. Thank you, Scott, for being here. In spite of the fact that your voice isn't working, <laughs> we're glad to have you. Um, uh, we're going to um, go through some basics of um, not just kind of community needs response planning today, but um, accreditation in general. Um, we have uh, quite a big group of people on the line live right now, and I know people will be watching the recording later. We um, and have some new libraries who have not done accreditation or any of this before, or new staff, new board members. So we are going to go through the basics of it and of the accreditation process and of the strategic planning itself. Um, I do have a question that somebody did ask before we started and yes um, someone says they have some board members watching with me today do I need to send you know let us know that they are there um, yes please do um, if you have anyone with you um, besides whoever signed in and put their name into the go to webinar account system uh, just type into the question section who it is and then we will track from there and get them checked off as having attended uh, for also earning continuing education credits for watching this live show um, if you are watching the recording after the live show has happened, you would need to um, submit your core, your CE credits the way you normally do, and I'll actually show you where you can do that on the website um, when we get into that part. Um, so you'll have to submit those after yourself if you are watching the recording. We have no way of tracking who, wa who is specifically watching our recordings. So for the live show, just type in right now so we have all that info for you. If you're watching the archives later and you want to, you still need to earn the continuing education credit for watching, then use you the usual form to do that. All right, so uh, community needs response planning is something that, um, as you may have, you would have noticed from the description of the session today, which I'll go to here, was um, previously called strategic planning in the accreditation process. Uh, this is what it was originally called back in 2013. The accreditation, the public library accreditation process here at the Library Commission was um, switched up, came up with a new way of doing it, a new, new process um, of tracking. And part of that was having libraries create and write and submit a uh, strategic, what was called a strategic plan. In practice, however, um, that wasn't actually what it was that we were asking you to do. Uh, strategic plans are one thing, and it was sometimes cities or, or your library may have a strategic plan about what you're going to be doing for the next five years. Um, and the content in that was different from what was asked for by Richard Miller, who's my predecessor, the previous Nebraska uh, Library Development Director here. Um, he wanted something else really but he called it a strategic plan um, as it was being taught out there uh scott childers who was on the line with us he started calling it community needs response planning and that really did make sense uh, that is what it is it's about looking at what's going on in your community and figuring out how the library can respond to that so i decided when i took over to let's just change the name and make it accurate to what we are actually doing what you're actually going to be um, looking for as you're doing this what you're going to be using it for and what we want from you so um, this is only for those of you who have done these plans previously this is only a change in name not in content or what you're going to be doing so don't panic too much yet about that um, so if you have a previous strategic plan that you created for this you can still use that as a basis for your new community needs response plan because the format will still be the same all right 
And feel free to chime in with anything you want to, Scott, as we're going through this. I will grab it from our uh, question section here. So on the Nebraska Library Commission website, we have information, we have this program of accreditation and certification programs. And I'm gonna go through board certification, librarian certification, and then into library accreditation. Because the first two things here, they are all together on our menu because the first two items, um, the two certifications for your people, all both feed into the accreditation for your library. Um, First thing we'll, we'll you know talk about here is why would you want your library to be accredited? accredited? Why is this something that you'd even um, get into? <laughs> uh, there are uh, quite a few, a few advantages to it. There is um, bragging rights, of course, that you can then tell everyone out there that you are a, an accredited library or that your librarian is certified if they're doing that part, that your board is certified. So you um, let people know that you have actually gone through the process of keeping up the um, services and programs and things the library offers, that your librarians, your director and your librarians have done continuing education, lifelong learning, professional development type activities to keep up with what they need to know to do their job, and that your board members can have done the same thing. They've been uh, attending workshops and, and doing things like that to keep up their um, um, knowledge of how to help run the library. Um, in addition to um, that, you also can receive certain money depending on how you're accredited. You're eligible for state aid to public libraries. This is funding that we get from the um, IMLS, Institute Museum and Library Services. They give a certain amount of money that we can pass on. Um, there's money. So Depending on how you're accredited, that will um, be something that you, you need to be accredited in order to be able to receive the state aid from us. So that is something that you'd have to get your accreditation to get that money. It's not a huge amount of money. Well, depending on your budget, it depends. For example, in 2016, the basic fee amount you got was $594 for the year. Not bad, almost 600. Um, so definitely you can get money. Um, if you're at higher levels, you get a little bit more money. There's three different levels that we'll go into in a sec here. Um, you're also eligible to apply for certain grants. Here at the Library Commission, we have various grants that we can offer. And um, if we have the monies from either the state or the federal government, and in order to apply for those, you do need to be, um, we do have that requirement that you be one of our accredited libraries at any level. Also, there are, um, so there's, when we do have the funding, there's library improvement grants, which come from LSTA funding. There is um, continuing education grants, which also come from LSTA funding, or youth grants for excellence for children's and youth services. Some of that comes from state funds. So it depends on where our monies are coming into, um, where we can get the money, the funding for that. But you, if you're accredited, you can apply for those. Also, USDA grants for community facilities. In order to apply for those, you do need to be accredited. And there's also the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Grants from the Nebraska Community Foundation. This is a, um, a grant specifically for public libraries with a population served of 3,000 or less. And this is where the information is here on our website. And those grants, you you also do need to be, they've got three grants actually, two that you have to be accredited for. And they actually have one grant that you can use to get work towards your accreditation. One of their grants is a planning grant, which is the purpose is to give you monies to, for anything you may need to pay for or anything you need to put funding into to help get your accreditation up. And you'll see what some of those things might be as we get into the actual forms. So board, we'll start right at the top here with our board certification first. Um, library boards, um, if they want to be certified, need to um, join the program here, apply right here. There's a form here to apply to um, be certified. And then your board has to do 20 hours of continuing education credits over a three year period. Now this is the board as a whole not each person. So if you have five board members and they all sit and watch a one hour webinar together, that's um, five hours of CE credit they've already earned. Boom. If you've got, as someone is mentioning here, you've got board members watching this workshop today, this is going to be two hours if I get it get down, get it to not go longer. So that's two hours of CE credit that each person would earn. So um, if you had all five watching this, you could potentially get 10 hours of CE and be halfway through what they need just from today. You can also watch the archives, the recordings. Um, we have a list here of the things that are eligible for boards to do. Um, workshops, webinars, um, 
this is both watching in person or on a recording. Um, we also have access to these trustee academy courses. This is through the American Library Association. The Nebraska Library Commission pays for us to have a um, subscription in, with them. And um, all Nebraska Library staff um, are eligible to attend any of these um, workshops here. So you can watch any of these and um, submit those as well. So that's your board certification. You can also look up your board status. We do have a, that available. This is, well, this is where you can submit your CE activity as a board. There's a form here that you just fill in. Um, you, as you can see here, you can do more than one activity and more than one person on a single form. So if you have people watching today, you can list all three, four, five of their names here all at once and submit one form. Um, as I said earlier, today's we'll submit it for you as long as you let us know anything you don't have us tracking, you would um, put it all in there. We also have where you can look up your board's status. So this is, um, you can look up your city. This is all um, for everyone to look at. There is information about if the board is certified, when the expiration date is, and which library system you are. Um, if your board's certification has expired, it will be indicated by being in red, and it's pretty obvious because of the date as well. If you click on the library's name here, you will get the full information about that lot, that board certification, where in the current three-year period that they're in, what they have attended, how many hours they've earned, and how many hours they need, and when it is due. So you can see here, Ainsworth has got some, they need their, um, they need 14 more credits, um, but for the whole board to do by September of this year. All right, so that's a board certification. Um, so your board does need to be certified uh, um, in order to be accredited. They can be in the midst of being certified, like as you can see, Ainsworth is currently certified and their expiration is in 2018 until September of this year. So as long as they're currently certified, in, um, that works. Um, in addition, your library director has to be certified as well. This is different. Library directors or library staff need to do um, more um, more work and they have a higher level of uh, criteria that we have here. They have to do 45 hours of a continuing education credit also over a three-year period. So within three years doing something that equals up to 45 hours. Um, we have here listed um, if you are um, do have some sort of education already, um, if you've got your degree in either library science or um, something else, you can you reach a certain level. Um, you can also use our basic skills classes if you don't have a degree um, in library science to get your level, um, to get to the correct level, basic skills courses, the free online courses that we offer here at the Library Commission. You do have to sign up and join the program. Let us know that you want to be working towards your certification by submitting an application here. So as soon as you submit that, we start tracking. Um, and we do have, let's see here, so this is about, all this information here about when it um, expires, what you need to do, how to submit things, and then we do have a list here, just like we have for the library boards, a different list for the things that librarians can, or library staff or library directors can use um, to attend. Um, extending actual, all the same thing, webinars, workshops, conferences, uh, taking courses online or in person, um, teaching, you can actually earn CE credits if you actually present or teach. So presenting at um, conferences, presenting on, an, um, an, on a webinar like what we're doing here, um, you can earn continuing education from there at, credits from there as well. We do also have where you can track this. There is a CE record review that you can use. And I'm not going to log into this right now because you do need for, for your individual ones, you do have to put in a password to look up your, your personal information. Um, if you don't know what your password is, you've got we've got a little look up here that you can do that. Um, but this will tell you that basically the same information as what is in the board one that will tell you what you've done over the most recent, you know, thir current three-year period you're in, uh, how many credits you've earned, and how many credits you have left before you have gotten your full, your, all of your uh, 45 credits. 
For both the board and the librarian, we have a couple of manuals. We've also put together online a library board manual and a director's guidebook. The library board manual, some of you might remember as there's this big binder that we would mail, you know, put pages into and mail and send out to libraries. It's all online now. Uh, so anything you need to know, or your board needs to know about being a library board, hopefully we've got here um, in our library board manual. There's a search feature. So if you're looking for something specific, you can search and we'll search all of the information here. For our directors, we have director's guidebook. So if you are new director, this should be hopefully very useful to you. Or if you're just a current director and why not, you know, something new happened you need to look up, um, we have the same thing here. See, this one is a much longer uh, document, a lot more chapters to it. Um, same thing has a search feature though. So we strongly recommend taking a look at both of those docu those items, the man library board manual and the director's guidebook to see you know what is a, what it is about being a um, board and, and a librarian director. So board certification and librarian certification then feed into your library's accreditation. Um, required that the board is certified and your library director is certified. Other library staff can also be certified. Uh, you can earn more points. This is how the program works towards your accreditation for your library by having uh, more staff. But the only one that's required to be certified certified is the director. So for public library accreditation, this is a um, also accreditation lasts for three years. You see we have a theme here. Everything goes three years. Um, the process begins in July of each year. In July, a the application form that you submit and update with all your update information will be made available. And then it needs to be completed by October 1st. October 1st is the deadline to get your form in and to get your community needs response plan in to meet. Um, which I then look over it and um, work with you on it and approve it and whatever, make it any tweaks that need to be done. So we have a lot of information here on our website about accreditation and we're going to go through some of this and then we also have a separate page for the community needs response planning that we're also going to through all, go through all the details on there as well. So you can um, take a look at all these things here. There are for library accreditation, there are 12 minimum qualifications that you have to meet before you can even begin to start thinking about um, apply, being accredited. These qualifications then feed into your application form that you'd use to um, actually submit and apply for um, uh, the accreditation. Now you can see here, it says right at the top, the 2018 process will begin July 1st. So right now the form is actually not live out there, We can, but we can look at it and see what it looks like. There is on our website, when it's not actually live for you to go through, we do have a preview application here. So if you wanted to look ahead of time and see what the form looks like, and we'll go through this in, in a demo in just a second, and what all the questions are and plan ahead, you can um, look at this preview and see all the answers here. Nothing here has anything to do with any real library. This is just showing you what kinds of things will be asked when you go in to look at your form. Um, you can print this out. I know we know some libraries do that. They just print out this whole page and then use it to check off and see if they've gotten, you know, something, if there's what well, all the different things are that they can possibly check off as they're going through this form or things that they haven't got and they want to work towards um, by October. Um, the live application will be here. Um, you will receive an email in um, right at the beginning of July letting you know when you are due for accreditation renewal, reaccreditation this year, if you're due in 2018, this is where you'll be sent here and we'll um, get an application sent, uh, an email will be sent to you so you can go right there. Um, we also have links here on our flyout menu for that. We also have where you can look up your library's current status. So you can see here your library, what accreditation level you're at, and when you do expire. So you can check here and see if you are coming up 2018. That's this year. Ends with this up. Uh, if a library has expired, it will be in red. There should be one here. Here we go. Um, which means they just didn't get to it yet or they expired previously. There's various reasons why. But so you can see history of them here as well. So you can check and see if you're up to speed. If there's no year here, that means they've never participated, never achieved um, accreditation as long as we've been doing it. In this case, the library's name does not link to anything special like the board one, <coughs> excuse me, that um, showed you uh, what they had done towards this just goes to the library's homepage if we happen to have a link to that. So that's what that is, different than the other one. Okay, so uh, what I want to do 
first next now is I'm going to briefly go through a short demo of um, the accreditation application form so you can see uh, anything uh, everything in there that you might need to um, be keeping up with there we go and as like I said, as you saw here, um, the form itself is actually not live right now, but I do have a special link where I can go kind of behind, you know, we have a, a demo version of the form that I can go to to actually show you how it works live. So when you first go to the form, this is what you're going to get as well. Um, you must meet these 12 minimum qualifications. Many of these qualifications actually come out of our Nebraska state statutes. These are, there are certain statutes in, in the legislature that are um, specific to libraries, and we've taken some of those and made them requirements for um, being um, an accredited library. We have a question mark here with help information that will pop up. This opens up a new page and it will tell you um, where information, and this is for the entire accreditation form. So as you scroll through this, it's not just the first 12 uh, requirements, but then it goes into all the other parts too. So you can see here, it says here being legally established, it's based on Nebraska revised statute sections 51, um, 201, 201.3, et cetera, et cetera, and um, section 16. Those are the, 51 is the one that most libraries follow, 16 for some, and then we've got links to more inf information about it so you can see where we are getting all of this from. So the, you have to be able to click all these 12 boxes before you can even get going. So your legally established library under state statutes, those links there on the help guide will tell you what you need to do to be legally established. Um, comply that you do comply with all Nebraska library laws and rules and regulations and any other local um, or federal laws that affect library operations. So the Nebraska laws would be the ones that you can find here through the legislature page. And um, if there are any federal laws that have to do with or anything local that your community has enacted about being a library. Um, you have to have a board, either governing or administrative, uh, governing or advisory. Um, that follows their by has bylaws and follows also the Open Meetings Act. You have to allow people to come in publicly to your board meetings. The board is certified, as I just mentioned, mentioned during those 20 hours of CE and every three years. The director is certified. Um, you receive local funding from your city, village, or count, township, or county. So it can't you can't be a volunteer library or a donation library. You have to have actual official funding coming to your library. You also have to submit your public library survey and su a supplemental survey that we have here. Um, the public library survey is done every year. Sam Shaw here at the Nebraska Library, Cation library Commission runs that. Um, some, and this is through Bibliostat, if that is something that is what you know, catches your eyes, what we're talking about here. Uh, public library survey, some of the answers that you put into that survey are actually automatically fed into this application form for you so that um, you don't have to retype everything on, about certain things that we already are asking you about. We'll automatically pre populate some of these answers. There's also a supplemental survey that we do here out of the Library Commission. There's more things we wanted to ask libraries about than what was on the main public library survey. So we have an additional one that you submit as well uh, that we ask libraries to complete as well to get, gather more information about what's going on in our libraries. So you would need to submit both of these in order to be um, eligible for accreditation and they have information from both of those feeds into your form. You also have to have paid library staff um, working during all hours, hours the library is open. This so this means on your basic schedule, you have to always have somebody on, on the schedule that is paid. Now, we do know that sometimes there's situations where you have to um, have a volunteer cover the, cover the hours if the librarian has to go somewhere or the staff is going to a meeting or a conference or event or something, and but the library needs to be open with a volunteer. That's okay. You know, for those on-the-fly situations as necessary, sure, you can have someone not paid. But as far as your basic schedule and the way it's written out, you have to have somebody scheduled to actually paid who is working. So this cannot be just a volunteer library or a reading room or that kind of thing. Uh, the director has to have an email address that they check. Now this may sound a little odd as a requirement, but we have had difficulties in the past with certain, um, some staff, some library directors that did not use email. 
and did not um, respond. So there's no way for us to reach out and contact them. We have, there's 260 to 70 public libraries in the state of Nebraska. We do not call or mail a lot of things to these libraries as regular communications. We use email as much as we can to reach out and get information to you and contact you. So you do have to have a director that is using an, has an email address that we have in our system and will be checking that and responding to it regularly. So when we do reach out to you to tell you, for example, your accreditation is, you're up for accreditation or your accreditation is expiring, your board is expiring, you might want to get on that, you need to be, you know, checking that email that your director does. Um, basic services need to be available to residents without um, charge. This is from the state statutes as well. Um, basic services, lending of your materials, coming in and using your materials on, on site, um, you offering reference help to them, All you can't charge for any of that. Now you can charge for things like um, per page costs for using your printers and things, that sort of thing, of course, um, those basic, those kind of extra things. But basic services that are listed here, um, you cannot charge for. Um, you also have to have pride internet to the access to the internet at no cost. We have had in the past that has been a issue at some libraries where they would, you know, remember when we used to have um, per minute, you pay by the minute for your internet and those kind of things. Some libraries are passing on that cost. You cannot charge for anything, letting people access your internet um, and then it'd be to be accredited. Um, like I said, if they print things out and you charge for paper or if you have a maker space and they, you charge them for materials, things like that is fine. This is talking about your basic core services. Um, Last of the 12 minimum qualifications is making an annual report to whoever is your governing body, um, city, state, county, city, county, however it works. <clears throat> so, um, and that it is also available to the public so that you submit or present a report of, of the annual report to um, your local government. So once you have all 12 of those checked off, then you can then you'll notice this popped up now you can actually apply for accreditation. This will ask you for user ID and password and this is the same bibliostat password that you use for um, submitting your public library survey. I have a demo one here for our Wayne Public Library that we use. So when you first log in, um, you now have all the other questions here that you can actually check on, check on, click on what you um, do at your library. Um, okay, we have a question wanting to know um, that I've been talking about starting a new application and will I be also covering updating one? Okay, well the way it works actually each year is you some each year each time that you're up for reaccreditation, you actually submit a new application. This, when I log into this one, you know, like when you log into your form this year, if you're doing 2018, it's not going to have your previous year's items already checked off. It's not last year's and then you modify it. It's a brand new form um, with everything um, except for the things that feed into it from the survey. Everything else is blank and you check it all off um, new again. So you aren't, you're not going to see your previous one that you then just update. You're gonna, you are gonna see a brand new one. Now you can have access to your old one to compare and see and make sure you check off the same things. That's fine, you should have a copy of that. If you don't, I can get you a copy of your previous form, um, your application form if you, if you need that to um, see what you did before or compare to what you're answering this year. So when you get into the form, just get my cord out of the way here. First, you've got some basic instructions here about the application. Um, there are three levels of accreditation that you can reach, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. And yes, this is, did, this is based um, off of the Olympics. When this was being originally done, apparently the Olympics were happening as well as they were just recently. And uh, uh, Linda, John, uh, Laura Johnson, who was our previous continuing education coordinator here, made the offhand joke, we could call them the levels bronze, silver, and gold. And uh, they liked it. <laughs> So the, the, the group liked it, the committee, and decided to go with it. Previously, we had the three E's, um, essential, um, 
excellent. And I'm not sure which all they were, but um, it was confusing having them all called the same thing. Um, previously, also with the, the previous version of this, um, you had to reach one level before you can um, and meet all of those criteria before you could work to do, do or um, get to the next level and then to the third level. Um, so if you didn't have all the criteria for the lowest level, you wouldn't even have a chance to be second or, you know, second or third. Um, that was um, harsh for some people. For some libraries, it um, was difficult. If you were missing one criteria, you were out from even trying to get to the second level or the third. Um, part of the reorganization of this was making it easier for libraries to be at different levels, realizing that not all libraries necessarily provide the same services. Not all communities need the same in things done by their library. So uh, what we do now is you earn points for each thing that you do. And you may learn points in one area, that um, another library won't, but they'll earn points in an area that you won't. And in the end, you total up how many you have, and that will give you whatever level you end up at. You can see here, and we'll see that as we go through the form more, how many points each item is worth on here. Um, this way, different libraries who do different things and serve their communities differently can reach bronze, silver, and gold by checking off you know, something completely different, potentially. Hopefully, the idea was to make this much more um, applicable to every type of library that might be out there. Um, you can see here we have information about the um, items that are automatically um, inputted from the public library survey and the supplemental survey. Um, so anything checked with a green check or a red X is fed in from the survey and you can't change those. Um, you'll see here meeting the 12 requirements is one that we did from the first page, but whenever you see that, it's nothing that you can click on and do anything with in this live form unlike you can do here. Um, if something does need to be changed from that, for example, you submitted your survey in February, but by the time October comes around and this is due and something's changed, you can always reach out to Sam. Sam Shaw is in charge of all that, and we can talk to you and see about updating. Some of the answers as well are done by comparing you to peers, your library peers. And we have a button here that you can click on to see your library's peers. So this is the one for Wayne. Wayne would fall about in the middle here with libraries who, um, and this is based on local service area. So official local service area. So all the libraries below and the second half here have a smaller service area than Wayne and the ones above it have uh, bigger. The idea is that some things, some some of the criteria that you might re meet, um, how to decide, you know, what's good. What is the library doing? That is, Are they doing it well? Are they not doing it? So how well are they doing it? How badly are they doing it? Uh, they decided that some things we will compare you to other libraries similar in size to yours. So that you can see uh, libraries who are in a similar size community, community as yours, this is what they're doing and here's what you're doing. And then if you meet or exceed they, what they are doing, you get the points. If you don't, if you're below that, then you don't get the points. Uh, you'll notice here also that we have a couple of, uh, of the peers are from Iowa. For some of the libraries in Nebraska, there are not enough Nebraska libraries that are close in size to make a really useful comparison for the, you know, to do the math. So we have looked to neighboring states, Iowa, Kansas, South Dakota, for some libraries to bring in more um, libraries um, just to make it, you know, actually do something comparable that, that works. So uh, Wayne would fall in the middle here. When you look at your library's list, it's going to be completely different and your library is going to fall in the middle. Um, also, as you're going through, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here so nobody get dizzy with, as I do this. As you're going through the form, if you decide that you, you're, you can't commit, submit everything, you haven't clicked everything, you need to, you get interrupted, you've got to go look up some numbers or something, you can save and come back to the form later. So um, it will save everything you've checked and you'll be able to pick up where you left off and continue um, checking or unchecking boxes. Um, if you think you are completely done, you can just hit submit and submit the application and it comes to me. Whenever you click either one of these, you do get an email sent to your, it will be automatically sent to you. We'll have a link that you can use to go back into the form to see where you are and pick up where you left off if you've saved and resumed later. Um, also, I'll tell you, submitting does not mean it is totally in stone and you can never change anything. Um, we can still change things from our side if we discover, as discussing things with you, that it's actually, um, you forgot to check some box or you check something by mistake, that's okay. Up until we make the final decision on if you are or aren't accredited and at what level, we can always go in and make changes, even if you've hit the submit button. We can do that from behind. 
scenes. Also, you'll notice there's a little box here that's been floating up and down as I've been scrolling. This is the total points that your library has as you and earns as you're going through the form. Right now, there's 74 because that's based on items that have pre-filled from the public library survey. You can see here's the first two down here. Um, and now we can check other ones and see if we get um, how many more points we earn. So as we're going through, you'll see there's tells you how much points each one is worth. And when we check on something, for example, having a, an updated community needs response plan, our point total goes up automatically over on the right. So it'll keep tracking you and keep going along with you as you are going through the form. So let's go, I'm going to go through some of the um, items here. We're not going to go through every single one of them item by item because that would just take too long and we need to get this through this and then get into the um, the working on your plan. Um, accreditation, there's two things you always have to submit to be um, evaluated for accreditation. One is this online form, which is your application, and second is your accredit. Um, strategic plan. This is one that I have here as an example um, that you would email or mail to me. So those two documents, I, two items I have to have. This as a document, this as an online form, and those two um, are what I look at to evaluate your library for accreditation. Now, um, this first item here, we are going to, ch it, it says you have to have an up-to-date written community's response plan. And I did indicate here so people remember, previously called your strategic plan, approved by the Library Commission. That means me. <laughs> so you send this to me. Um, I'm going to change the wording on this before this form goes live for this year because um, approved is a little is a bit misleading at this stage. When you're submitting this, completing this application, you might not have been approved yet with by your uh, your form. Your plan might not have been approved yet potentially. You may submit this and then mail me your form and then I look at both, mail me your plan and I look at both of them together. And then, you know, two weeks later I get back to you and say, yep, you're all good. Well, the wording here saying approved is a bit, you know, premature. Unless you send me the plan first, I approve it, then you go and do this. And that does not have to be in that order. It just has to be by October 1st, you have to have submitted this online form and you had to send me a copy of your plan, um, approved or not. Um, and then we can start working on um, looking at both of them together. Things might be tweaked as we're going through them. Um, so that wording is going to be changed to say submitted by, um, submitted, written plan must be submitted to the Library Commission by when you're um, uh, doing this online form. So I'll make that a little more appropriate. Uh, something else that's being changed that's related to that is we, um, the form goes live on July 1st this online form. This form and your plan need to be to me by October 1st. Uh, you can submit early, that's okay, you don't have to wait till October 1st, but anytime up to October 1st. Previously, up till now, when you when you are accredited, you receive a certificate, an actual uh, certificate that we mail out to you that you can put up on your wall, frame, whatever you want, and it would, said that your accreditation expired on September 30th of whatever year you were due for. Um, somebody called me and, and was confused and thought that was a bit confused, was concerned, and I was concerned too, and she explained the thought process of, of this. So I submit everything by October 1st, and then after I've got this form and I've got your plan, I then read them, look at them both, compare, make sure you've you got everything checked off, make sure your plan is written okay. I may come back to you with questions or um, needing more information or asking you to tweak something in your plan or noting that you forgot to check something in your application form. So there's some back and forth still after October 1st. However, your certificate states that your, ex your accreditation was good through September 30th of the year. This person was concerned that, well, I submitted everything October 1st, but I've expired on September 30th. Does that mean I'm unaccredited for like a month before we get this figured out? And I thought about that and said, no, 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 that's weird. I don't like that. <laughs> that does, that's a kind of a, I think we got some sort of disconnect and we planned the, the dates on this. So as of this year, we're going to change and we will be retrofitting everyone previous as we can get to them. Expirations of accreditation will be as of December 30th of a year, whatever year, December 31st of whatever year you are due to expire, not September 30th. So what the process would be, the form, this online form goes live July 1st, you get this completed and your strategic plan to me by October 1st, and then 
by between October 1st and December 31st. I work back and forth with you on your form, on your plan. And by at the latest December 31st, you have an answer of being accredited or not. So all accreditations are going to expire on the end of the calendar year rather than that September date. I'm sure people would love that extra couple of months. <laughs> so, um, so we got the community. So let's get back into the form itself. So we can get through this in the next uh, 15 minutes or so before we then move on to the actual plan. Um, so we have the plan. Um, have you reviewed it every, annually to take a look at it and see what um, um, it needs updating potentially? Put down what date you might have done that. Um, and then policies. Um, any of these policies you have, you can earn one point for each one that you check off. So um, I'm just going to check a bunch of these. I'm just randomly doing this. I don't know what Wayne does or doesn't do. But as you can see, as you check these, your numbers keep going up. If there are some policies you have that you have not, um, that we haven't come up with here, go ahead and list them. you got three others you can add. If some of these policies are combined into one, so your potentially your... Um, Internet use policy is actually part of your patron behavior policy, um, which is part of also confidentially patron records, because that's all patron record. If those are all one policy that you've written, but they mention, they cover all of those topics in that one document, that's okay. You don't have to have separate documents for each one of these. You just have to have all of these things somewhere mentioned in a policy. Um, this has to be a written policy um, approved by your board, um, so out there for you know so that people can see it. Um, someone did ask, do we have to send in your policies to me? Uh, no. I know previously Richard did have you send in your policies so that he could look at them. Uh, I, I don't know that that's necessary. I'm, you know, unless you want me to look at one and, and if you're concerned about is it written correctly, um, is am I, did, you know, did I cover everything I need to or I want some tips or ideas on it? Sure. But as a requirement for being credited, no, we're not going to have you have to submit all of your policies. We do have a link here. Um, you can see throughout the form, there's those yellow question marks. But we do have some links to example policies, too. So if you're unsure about if you've written the right, you know, your covers things correctly, if there's something else you should have written, we've got some links to some uh, examples as well. Um, also, I would recommend just doing a search, like Google search, and look up um, Library Policies Nebraska. And you can find many of our libraries in the state have, and we haven't listed all of them here because there's just too many to potentially link to, um, we'll have them posted on their websites. So um, you could find uh, a, one of our one of your neighbor's policies out there potentially to um, borrow or work from. So. There's your policies. Uh, technology plan. This is something separate from either a strategic plan or a community needs response plan. This is how you're keeping your technology up. Are you updating things or not? Do you review it? Um, and then your friends or foundation. As you can see, those both came from the supplemental survey. Next part is resources, local income, facilities, staff, basically the basic running of the library. As you can see, many of these are green checked. This is, they all, all this came from the public library survey. So even though this looks like a pretty long application form, the accreditation form, much of it you don't have to do anything about at this stage because you've already given us the information and statistics and your pub, via your public library survey. So some of this is all done for you. Um, you'll see what many of these do is it will show yours in here, your local expenditures for this particular one, the peer average, this is comparing to those peer libraries from the top, and the peer median. You need to be equal to or greater than either the average or the median of your peer group. So you got a couple of different ways the math could be done. Um, if you are uh, equal to or greater, either of those things, you get the green check. If you're not, you'd have a red X. So all of these ones here that have the check, that's what this is all about. Um, local income, open hours, uh, expenditures and staff, library of education, uh, education level of the library director is this first one. And then if you did have any additional staff that are also certified going through our certification program, you can earn more points for them as well. Um, the Level, this is something for the live certification level. This is based on the population of your community, local service area. If you're at whatever local serve, whatever your population level is, that's the level that your director needs to be certified to. And this information is all in that public library certification page so you can see what each one of these are. 
And then in order to earn the points for additional staff, a certain number of additional staff need to be certified based on what your population area is as well. And then you can earn the three points extra for having some more staff uh, certified. Um, so the library director is a requirement being certified. The additional staff being certified is optional. If you, um, if they want to and they're working through, through that, you can just earn some more points for that. Uh, so, so that's some basic things there. And you can look at all these other op options here as you go through the form yourself. Uh, technology, do you have an ILS? Is it available online? As you can see, things that just were answered based on your public library survey. There's no comparison in these in the case of these particular questions. Do you have internet? Do you have phone service? Um, are you meeting ADA requirements? Um, all these things you can check off. Let's see if I have anything else up here. Yeah, we've checked our open hours with people. So what anything, make sure you check your anything you have. Um, adequate number of computers, mm -hmm. that's a uh, subjective thing, obviously. Uh, collection, do, and you can see here, uh, weeding is uh, from the public library survey as well. And now here you can see we finally have some things that have the red X. So in these cases, uh, the library did not meet or exceed their peer average, their peers, either average or median. So this is all just from what you was entered, your expenditures is what was entered in your form, and then we compare it and then automatically check or um, X. So these are a few here now that the library does not meet the criteria. Um, like I said, and we have had some libraries last year who, like I said, from the time they did the the surveys to the time they did their accreditation form, because it is like February to October, uh, things had changed. Situation had improved, luckily, and we are able to go in and change some of these and tweak and get you some of the points if that is something that has happened to your library. So keep in touch with me and or Sam about that, and we can make sure that we um, have the accurate information when we're working towards your accreditation. Other things about the collection, does it reflect the mission and goals of the library? Hopefully. Do you use online websites? This means Googling things, just going online and looking for information to help um, your library's users uh, find whatever they need to. So those are a couple there that you can check. Services that you offer. Um, do you have outreach programs? Do you use interlibrary loan? Uh, here's uh, attendance for programs, as you can see coming from your survey. Um, this one here, library programs and services as specified in your community's response plan. In your plans, you would have had goals and objectives, and some of them potentially were coming up with a new program or a new service that you offer. If you have done that and it's in your plan that you're submitting to me, um, make sure you check this box and just list briefly here who they were. I will take this, what you checked here, and I will look at your plan and read and compare and make sure you've got that mentioned in here. And if you don't, I'll ask why. <laughs> or if I notice you mentioned something in here and you didn't check this box, I want to help you get points too. Make sure you do it right. I will reach out and say, hey, I saw you said you did this program. Go over there and check that box. Let's get it done. Um, accessing the databases made available for the Library Commission, that would be an, um, Nebraska Access. If you do have any of that, that if you are one of the libraries using that. Um, do you have other things that you have paid for uh, beyond the Nebraska Access databases that we provide to your libraries? You, this is also, as you can see, something that came from your survey, and you can see here they listed other things that the library is subscribing to on top of the free Nebraska Access. And do you have your Wi-Fi? Uh, cooperation and collaboration. This is getting out there and working with other um, non-typical library organizations. So um, going to your city council, um, sharing services, uh, co you know, coordinating with some other um, city department or preschool or senior center, whatever, and, and doing various things. So in this case, as you can see here in this section, none of this is anything that's asked for in your surveys. So here we're getting into things that are just on the application form, the accreditation form, and you need to be checking these boxes to earn the points for it. Um, so is the director or a member of the board attend at least two village board, city council, county commission, whatever you have in your area meetings per year? 
Um, some people attend more than that, and that's awesome. <laughs> um, I know some librarians I've been talking to has been doing this. They we go every month. Um, we're on the we're on the agenda every other month just to keep them to speed. That's awesome. That's great. Um, but at least attend two to let you know keep your community, your governing community, uh, governing board know what's going on at the library. Um, does the staff participate in community organizations and groups? Um, and you can see here we start having more of the question marks. So this is I'll move this over here, 4.02, and it explains if at least four different community groups have a participant who is a library staff member. We're talking about Rotary, Kiwanis, um, those kind of things uh, that you are a member of. That is what you can earn points for there. Um, do you have a teen board? A lot of libraries are doing this now, having teen advisory boards, teen, teen groups that help you um, plan programming for teens in the library. Um, and you see here, this one even has a little note for this about cooperating with other local entities. Read the help information. So even though it's been there as you're going through the form, I give this one's a little nudge saying, hey, click here. And um, for this one, we're looking at 404. Um, so here list public agencies or other agencies, parks and rec or private groups with the library shares providing the services. So this would be where you're co-sponsoring things. So we're um, working with the parks and rec to do the story walk in the public in the in the in the in the park. Um, if you've I don't know if anyone here has done story walks or seen them, that's where you take a book, you typically a children's book, um, an extra children's book take out all the pages, laminate them, put them on signs, post throughout the public uh, a park, and as, you're, as someone's walking through the park, they read the book. So things like that where you've cooperated with them to do something in specific. Um, participating in any um, advocacy efforts, local, regional, statewide, national. Um, we just recently had the Nebraska Library, um, Library Advocacy Day here in Lincoln. That was actually just on Tuesday, two days ago. Um, if you or your, any of your staff um, participated in that, check off the box and put their names there. Um, also national or regional, if you're involved in ALA's advocacy programs. Um, and if you're involved in uh, have anything else, other consortia that you participate in, Overdrive is the ebook consortium we have here, um, the Pioneer Consortium, Shared Catalog. Um, so those are local Nebraska ones. Uh, if there's regional ones, something else that's a Midwest you know, core consortium of whatever, um, you can go ahead and check that box as well. And the last section on the form is communications. How are you getting the word out and where about what's going on at your library? And this is all about, this is, um, starts off about your library website, having one and posting your mission statement, your motto, um, all those policies that are you said you had up at the top on your library website. Um, you actually um, interact with your public on either your website, blog, Facebook, Twitter, other social media places. Uh, and it says at least monthly, um, I'm not like I don't go and count and make sure you did something every single month, but regularly uh, monthly is good. Being able to at least come up with something you want to promote once a month shouldn't be too difficult. List all the places where you are. Facebook, Twitter, we have a blog, whatever, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever the newest thing is that everyone is getting involved in. Um, now, I will go and look at these things. This is where I will be going to your library's website and looking for that you have these posted. Going to your Facebook and your Twitter and seeing are you posting regularly or did you set up a Facebook page three years ago and nothing's happened with it. I will go in and check and make sure. Now, social media is great, but keep doing things in um, traditional means as well. Newspapers, flyers, radio spots. Are you doing any of that for promoting um, your uh, services and programs? Uh, do you have exhibits or displays in your library? The local, you know, someone's uh, quilt collection is on display. Public bulletin board for people to post things. And then the last few things are about reporting um, to your boards or your community. So this is reporting regularly on the library, on the village board, city council commission, or township board. So are you a regular monthly, you know, on their agenda to report what's going on in the library? Do you also then take those and put them on your website? Some people do report, but then just don't post them, whichever works. And then um, communicating 
elsewhere, not just to your village board or your county board, but going to other business, other organizations, like is there a small business organization in your town? Is there some sort of organization that has an annual uh, regular board meeting or something that you can come to them? Like you say, I want to be on the agenda of the Kiwanis meeting this month, or I want to be on the agenda for the PTA um, to talk about what we're doing in collaboration with the schools, all those kind of things. So you can see as we've been going along, our points have been adding up and we've got 225 that gets us to silver in here. Um, we also see it has here the library director's name, um, library name, director's name, and email. This is pulled automatically from your public library survey. If that has changed since you did that, because new, new director, go ahead right here and you can update that for us. And then we'd submit this. I'm not going to actually hit submit because I don't want to accidentally submit something on Wayne's behalf. Um, but that is what you would do. Either submit if you're done or save and resume later to pick up where you left off. So, yeah, 225 gets them to the silver level. Um, you need 175 points for bronze, 200 for silver, 250 for gold. There's a total of 275 points that you can earn. Um, there's no special prize for getting all points, though. So any uh, questions about the form while well, we're still here? Perfect. Go ahead and type in the question section. If you have a microphone, say, I have a mic. Please unmute me. Um, Scott, do you have anything to share or that I've missed as I've been going through this? I'll give you guys a few minutes to type in what you uh, need, want to before we move on to the plan. All right. Oh, wait, something just popped up. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, that, I'm not, I'm probably true. Uh, Rebecca says, right now I don't have questions. I'm taking notes. I'm sure the questions will come. <laughs> That's fine. Um, you just want to keep up with what I'm saying now and not ask questions. Type in whenever you have a question. Don't have to wait till I ask just when you think of it. Um, of course, you can always call me, email me later when you do are actually working on this and come up with any questions too. So now we're going to get into doing the actual, the plan, the second half of applying and being accredited, the community needs response plan. We have a link right here in our flyout menu under library accreditation for planning. So we have a whole separate page about that. And I did email to everyone who pre-registered today um, the, where's the one I have here? Materials that I'm going to, some of them that I'm going to be using for, um, the second half of the workshop now. Um, they are also all of it, most of the things on here are available through this page. So we're gonna look at them on the page as well. And I also did post them, whoops, that was wrong, on, the session page for um, today. So anyone who didn't pre-register, so I didn't have your email, you can go here and get the same document of packet of information that we're using now. I'll keep that open just now for more reference. All right. So community is response planning. This is the plan. And what we're talking about here is hopefully the title is self-explanatory. What is your community need and how can you at the library respond to that, to them? Um, the first thing that's in this packet is this article that was from an American Libraries magazine back in 2015 about the Hartford Public Library um, having community and police relationships. This is something um, I'm not. You can you can read it on your own time. Read it now if you've got it in, in hand if you want to. Um, this is something they they did a. Um, they found out that there was a, a problem with safety. People were concerned about safety in the community. And so the library, and you can see here from this post, from this picture here, hosted meetings with police and community members to talk about it. 
to work together on, well, what is going on? What can we do? Um, what are the problems? And came up with some great ideas and just built, built more a stronger community by, you know, the library finding out. Now, the library can't make the world safer. Well, they, you know, in, in certain ways they could, I'm sure, but ideally it's the police's job to do that. But they found out this was a problem and we can help. We can facilitate the meeting of the police, the you know security and the community members who are concerned about this issue and have them talk. And um, it came out with great. They, they, they improved relationships. Um, the library was, you know, seen as helping, you know, being helpful and, and important and um, useful to the community. So, um, from, you know, go ahead and read this in your, and you have your time, um, a success, I would say. Um, so this is something that is kind of thinking outside of the box of typical um, library, public library services, not something you'll see listed anywhere as, as you know, here's how you run a library necessarily. But this is what we're talking about, something um, this is the kind of mindset that we're um, trying to get into with this is that what's going on outside our library walls and what can we do anything to help with it? And there's gonna be plenty of things that you can't, that you're just like, uh, we're, we have no idea. Um, but this is the kind of thing is that we're talking about. So um, this isn't something you would have learned in library school, not maybe specifically mentioned in basic skills classes, although you're, 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 uh, fellow students may mention similar things like this. Um, something non-traditional that getting the library involved in, looking out into the community. So this is just a good example of that kind of thing. So for a community's response plan, there are seven basic elements that are they need to be in one, a, uh, this plan. And we have those all listed here. It's also the next item. It's on the, the packet as well of materials. I get to it here. Seven elements. I'll do it off the page here. Um, now, as I said, everyone who is going through a reaccreditation now, this is your library's second time through this new process. Everybody who's doing it again has been through once at least. Um, so you should have, if you've done, are already accredited, a previous strategic plan that will have these parts to it. Some of these parts will need updating when you go through your accreditation the next time you're up, whether it's this year or in a future year. Some of the parts won't. Some things will still stay the same and that's okay. And we'll go through each part of this so you can see what we're talking about. Um, library's mission statement, number one of the elements. It's your motto, your, you know, your, your, um, you know, why we do what we do, uh, most likely would not need updating, but you never know. After going through your evaluation and, and planning and looking at your community this time around, you might discover a few things you want to tweak in there, you, but um, most likely it won't change. Community profile, this is what makes your community unique. We're talking demographics here, statistics, uh, census data. This will definitely be updated. Uh, numbers you used three years ago are not going to be the same this year three years now. Um, census data is updated regularly. I'm going to show you where you can get that. Um, so you'll definitely be updating those numbers. Some of the numbers may not change, but you definitely want to look at what has been mo more recently gathered. Um, assessment of your community needs. This is what's going on in, this is not the library's needs, not what the um, library can do or the, what the library wants to do. This is looking beyond your walls at what the community needs, um, what's going on in the community, um, and everything that our community needs, which sounds huge, and it is. Not necessarily things the library can respond to. When you do this assessment of community needs, and we'll see that when we get to the worksheets, you're going to be listing a ton of things. And, you know, 90% of them are things that have nothing to do with the library and the library can't do anything about. But there's going to be some that you can. We just want you to be looking at what is going on outside your walls, and we've got some ways that you can do this. Um, analyzing, um, number four, this is the um, love it or hate it SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Some people love doing these. Some people hate it. <laughs> I've learned that as I've been doing my workshops the last couple of months on this. Um, in this case, we are talking about the strengths and weaknesses of the library. 
What is the library good at? What is it doing not so good at? What could it improve? But then we're looking at the opportunities and threats outside the library. This section should not mention the library at all. It's what's happening in your community, what's happening to your citizens, what are the opportunities and threats to them that has nothing to do with what the live, what's going on inside the library. So you're not looking at opportunities and threats to the library or about the library, it's the community when you're talking about that second half of it. Um, this is a part where some, some people previously uh, got tripped up a bit with their community, with their st old strategic plans. Traditionally, when you do a SWOT, it's about you. What is your, your organization, your business, your, your, your community, your town, maybe if your town did one. And it would be strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats, threats to your town, to your community. In this case, we're asking you to separate it out to internal, to the library, external, just talking about the community. Um, and then taking all this information, your your community's profile, what the needs are, this, the SWOT analysis, and analyzing all of this, what this all means, coming up with um, ideas about what, 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 what am I learning by looking at all this information and pulling it all together. Once you have learned all those things, coming up with some specific goals that you can um, accomplish based on this information you gathered. Now, as I said, you're going to come up with a lot of things needed in your community, a lot of things the library could potentially do for your plan, your community's response plan. You just need to, you know, in, uh, describe to me two or three that you're going to try and do over the next three years. Um, and then an evaluation. Um, make sure you're going to take a look at this plan regularly, see if things are going well, see if something needs to be tweaked. This plan is not in stone. It is not, you write it down and you have to do it over the next three years. And if you don't, because something happened or something went wrong or something changed, you know, that's okay. You can tweak it and uh, modify it as necessary as time goes on. So that's the seven basic parts of a community's response plan. And what we have here now, um, if we scroll down below, is some worksheets and how-to guides, help guides, resources for you to get these different set, the, all these parts done. Um, and we're going to go through some of these and show you what they are. These are all worksheets that you can use. Um, it's not the only way to do one of these documents. Um, it's just a process. Uh, you may have other ways that you do some of these things. It's just a way to help you if you have no clue where to get, how to get started or what to do um, or where do you even begin with one of these. These are things that were put together to try and help you um, at least do that. Um, none, you do not have to fill out all these worksheets and then submit all these worksheets to me. That's not your plan. Your plan is something you take all this information and write something up that um, explains it all and gathers it all together. Um, some of these things you could submit. Um, we've got some uh, uh, spreadsheets here where you can fill in numbers about your, your um, census data. And sure, if you want to just send that in along with your, your plan, that's okay, but you can just write a narrative of it as well. We have here also some examples of other um, communities response plans, which were previously strategic plans, that were deemed as good examples. These were all selected by Richard Miller previously. So um, we got different types of libraries, different sizes here. So if you want to see an example of one that we think was a good one, you could take one of these and use it as a model for yours. So here's Clay Center's. Um, Theirs goes from 2017 to 2020, and they've got a table of contents where they've got, you can see here, listed all the things, the process they went through, their profile, the community needs, they did the analysis, um, the goals, objectives, what they're going to do, and that's all is in this plan. And you can see here, they've um, done bullets of the different things and then started a write-up and tech, uh, narrative. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, let's see, let's look at. What was I looking at here? Ords, that's one I've been holding up to you. Um, they've got a more in-depth uh, table of contents here. And you can see theirs is all starting off mostly textual, a whole bunch of writing. Yeah. So various ways to organize it and have it look. There is no right or wrong way for how it looks, how it's formatted. All you need to have is that this these items somewhere appear in the plan that I can find them. 
So we have here a little 12 step process, which someone, I don't know if they realized this before, but someone made the comment, you know, 12 step program for <laughs> completing your community's response plan. And this is what we're gonna pretty much go through here. It's also in your packet of information. It's the next thing right after the seven um, criteria. And these 12, 12 steps, 12 basic steps actually follow along with these worksheets and doing your plan from step one to, to the end. So uh, the first thing you want to do when you're trying to work on one of these is um, come up with your planning team. Who is going to do this? Who is going to be um, part of your group? There's a worksheet here that you can use to write up. Uh, Hang on, it went on the other page. There we go. Where you can um, list these, the different steps that will be taken, team members, their different dates for target dates and ending dates. So just a way of helping track. Um, if this is useful for you, go ahead and use it. If not, don't worry about it. Um, but we do have a thing here about the planning team. Who should be on this? Um, who should help you out with this? This is not something that your director should do all by themselves. Um, you don't want that kind of pressure. <laughs> uh, you want people to help you work out all these things and to be involved and to um, know that this is going on. To to your library staff, they should be invested in this, involved in it as well. Um, ultimately, you may be coming up with programs and services and things that they are going to have to do. So you want them to know why they're doing them, <laughs> where you came up with the ideas, how this all ended up. Um, board members definitely want to have some of them involved. Now, it doesn't have to be every single staff person or every single board member. No, pick some that you think might work well at doing this. Um, community stakeholders, is there any community members who might be good to get on board, who might know, you know, have a line into what's going on in the community or have influence in the community and maybe not, not have been involved in the library before? Reach out to them and say, hey, we want you to help us plan what we're going to be doing at the library over the next three to five years. Um, you don't want to, and this is a, of course, a kind of a, too small or too large a group. <laughs> uh, at least five people. You want to have a discussion. No more than 12. Uh, 12 to me seems even crazy, but uh, definitely don't go over that. You don't want chaos. You don't want too many, too many cooks spoiling the brew, so to speak. Um, make sure that you can work efficiently and effectively with each other. Now, there will potentially be some, you know, conflicts and disagreements, and that's okay, and that's good, because you want to discuss and see, well, what do you think? What do you think? You know, somebody have new ideas. Um, be, di you know, have a diverse group of people there that represent your town, your community. Uh, so that's the first thing you want to do is figure out who is going to be working on this with you. Um, right, we have a question here. Is it okay if the group is less than five? Um, it's okay. As you can see, this does say gener generally. There's no laws or rule. There's no rules about that. Um, I think this was written just as that's a good number. Now, it's going to depend, of course, on the size of your community, of course, too, of how many people um, and your staff, if there is enough people to bring in. Um, so it's definitely okay. Um, you're not going to have your plan dis unapproved if you don't have five people listed just to have you know more than the director definitely <laughs> there we go all right so that's your your uh first step there is the um figuring out who is going to help you do this now um there you may have some of the same people as you had before when you did this three years ago. Um, and actually, I should say here, well, I mentioned I said three years ago, there, um, some, the, the, the accreditation process is a three-year process. Some of you, however, are going to have four years to, before you're due. Uh, there was some reorganizing and um, some extensions given to some libraries. We did a lot, a little lottery for that. Um, there's a hundred and over 100 libraries in the state. I'm not exactly sure how many, 130 or so. 
who are currently accredited. And when we, um, Richard and the, was first going through this the first time around, discovered that he was having to do like 80, 85 libraries in one year, and then only like 20 the next year. And so, so the, yeah, the, you know, the proportions were just off and it was just crazy one year. And, and so they did a lottery and determined that some libraries would get extended a year to make it more even. So Brown, every year we do about 40 to 50. So it's, it's more evenly, you know, we're not going crazy one year. So some of you may have a four years before the next time it's due. So if I'm saying three and you're thinking, but ours just doesn't, the math doesn't work out for that. That's why your library was given an extension. Um, like I said, I showed you before on our website, look on our uh, page for um, looking up your status, your library status to see when you actually do officially um, expire. And that's the, well, should have the most update information for you. So, uh, so you got our team together. Um, you can bring in some of the old people who did it the last time. That'd be cool to get an idea on, you know, keep them in the loop, but you want to bring in some new people too, to get some new blood um, and new ideas. So the next step is working on your community profile. This is your demographics, your statistics. We have a uh, sh worksheet here that you can use and you can fill in your library's numbers. And I'm going to show you where to look that up in the U.S. Census data. We also have statewide figures. Um, this is in your packet, this of uh, information. This is what I've included is um, the numbers for the state that we've, uh, for the state as a whole that we've pulled together for you. So um, you can compare with your own community when you look them up and see how how you're doing compared to everyone else in um, the, the whole state. Um, to collect this, the, the information you're collecting here on your on your library's profile and um, what's what your community is like, this is um, will help you come up with some potentially help you come up with some goals, some ideas, some programs that you can do based on what has changed in your community. So the American Fact Finder is where we have a link to where you can go to find your census information. Um, for your community. Um, what you can do is you can enter your library, your city, your state, um, county, um, state, county, city, town, or zip code. You can search by and explain how each of them work because they are a little different. Um, I'm going to put in Lincoln, Nebraska, oops, uh, to start with because that's where I'm sitting. So you can see here when you type in, started just typing Lincoln, it brought up other Lincoln, Lincoln counties in other states. So you're definitely going to want to go all the way out to when you're looking for your city, um, the setting, the state, Nebraska. Um, you can see here it brought up Lincoln County or Lincoln City. I'm going to bring up Lincoln City. And so this brings up my statistics here. Now, this is one, one part that I said you have to update your numbers here. Um, three years ago, people were using, a, um, and when, when people started doing this, the, the most recent census, yes, was in 2010. We have not had a full census since then, but the Census Bureau is does collect updated information in between censuses, and that's through the American Community Survey. And you can see here there's 2010 census numbers, and then there's 2016 American Community Survey numbers. These are the numbers I want you to use on your plan when you submit it and update it. Don't just carry over the numbers from three years ago that you used. Those aren't correct anymore. Something may have changed drastically. Some things might not have. Um, but I want you, you know, to be looking here and seeing what has gone, what has changed. Once you've looked up your city, so here we've got Lincoln um, total population. All of these um, section tabs off to the left here now are updated with information for your city. So business and industry. Um, here's the 2016 community survey information. Um, economic census. So you can get more up-to-date information about anything here. Here's the, the 2010 census for housing, but here's the 2016 numbers. So this is a section you're definitely going to update and you're going to do it here from your uh, American Fact Finder data. Now, depending on how you search this, it's going to come up with different numbers for your area. If you do city versus zip code versus county search, you're going to have different numbers. Um, and it's going to depend on how your city is arranged. So here I did Lincoln City. So this is giving me the numbers for the um, borders of the city of Lincoln. Lincoln has multiple zip codes though. So if I put in 68508, which is the zip code for here at the library commission, I get totally different numbers. So now this is just based on my zip code area and all the same numbers, but just for that area. If I did the county, which in my case is 
there we go, Lancaster County, Nebraska, I get the county numbers. So you may, depending on what community you consider um, that you serve, who are your users, you may want to do multiple searches in here looking at what's in your city, what's in your zip code, and if you do serve, if you are a county library or if you know you serve a county, look at those numbers to find out what's going on in your area. Um, you may have some ideas or people in town may have ideas about, oh, there's this increase in population here or nobody's having any kids, there's no little kids. And, and no babies being born, you can go here and verify if that is all true, if what people think are happening is. And then based on these numbers, you can come up with maybe some trends, uh, see what's going on and, and decide, you know, is there some area, actually there are, there's tons of babies being born, but it's in the whole, in the county, out in the outlying areas, not so much in the city. Okay, do we need to then reach out to daycares or schools or something outside of our city limits to help them with some sort of, you know, story times or whatever we're doing? So look at this and search it various ways to see how the numbers might be different. Uh, okay, we do have a question about this, cool. Um, how much of this information do you put into your plan? Ah, good question. Um, it's going to vary. Uh, not everything. Uh, I'm going to go back here to our main page. Like I said, we do have this spreadsheet here where you can fill in all this information that you can find. Population, age ranges, education levels, language, work life economic characteristics, culture, all these things, you'll gather all of this information and then you'll have to look at it and you're going to have to analyze it. And now I don't mean being like an F, you know, a professional analyzer or something and doing like you know, statistics and whatnot, but look at it and see what trends you see, what things look like they're important and what le what feeds into how what your community is like, what make, uh, like I said at the beginning, actually, what is makes your community unique. Um, so it's going to be up to you how much, you know, what is relevant it, you know, this whole breakdown of saying every single age breakdown, no, you don't necessarily need to tell me every single one of those group it bigger. If you notice, oh, wait, we've got an increase in kids, you know, five to nine years old, you know, certain things you're going to want to highlight. So this is going to be something you will be having to take a look at and think about. Um, but a lot of the basics here, you know, what is the basic education levels you're going to want to include, yeah. So unfortunately, I can't say exactly how much, just whatever gives a good picture. And so I can see that you are looking at your community and finding out what's the housing like, what's the education level according to the census, what's the education level, you know. Um, so... It's going to be a case by case. I'd say look at some of the plans we have up here as examples, see how much they put in. And also, once you submit to me, if I read it and say, oh, I need a little more, I'll just send it back to you and say, hey, I saw you mentioned doing preschool things, but I don't see anything about how many kids are in this in your city. You might want to add that information. Um, we have another question. How long do we need to hold on to our old strategic plans? Ah, that's a good question. As long as you need it for yourself. We keep them here in the files that we have. So we have all your old ones. Um, when, As we get farther into the section here where you create goals and objectives, where you come up with programs or services, you definitely want to have the, the, the plan available to yourself and your staff so that you can make sure you're on track for what you said you were going to do. Um, you're definitely going to want it to work on your next plan. So if you're due in 2018, you want last time, the one from three or four years ago. Um, so it's as long as it's relevant to you, um, as long as you need it, as in, because this is, should hopefully be an active document, something that you're using and referring to, not daily, but when you're working on these different um, ideas that you came up from it. Um, so there is no rule. There is no uh, specifics of when along you need to keep it. It's just as long as it is um, useful to you. We'll keep all of them as many as, you know, as long as we keep going through this process in our files. So. Okay, so that is your uh, next uh, connect, collecting all of your information about uh, your statistics and demographics of your community. 
The next thing you want to do is um, figure out, determine the community needs. What is happening in my town? Um, and we have a worksheet here on that. There we go. Uh, this is just some ways of gathering this information. You don't have to do all of these. Some of these might not be applicable to you or useful in your town, and that's fine. These are just some ideas of ways that you could um, collect this information. Okay. Uh, focus groups, surveys, interviews with key people, um, open houses, any way to reach out into the community. And what this is that you're doing here is the goal is um, not what method you use and it doesn't, so you won't have, you don't have to do certain things here. Um, you don't get in trouble if you don't do all of these. Um, this is just methods that you could use. The goal is, the importance is to find out what is happening in your community. In this case, we are talking about what is going on in my town, what's happening in my community outside of the library. Not what is the library need to do better in the community? What services should the library be opening, be offering? Um, this is beyond your walls, what's happening out in your community. Um, so to do focus groups, um, that would be bringing people in saying, hey, we want to have a focus group. We're going to invite a group of people into the library, uh, maybe bribe them with food, treats, coffee and cookies, and ask them certain questions. Uh, have a facilitator that runs the event. Um, that can keep uh, people on track, uh, make sure one person doesn't monopolize the conversation, someone in your community, you, you may know who they are. Um, you might hire someone to do this. This is something that you could poten to potentially um, get a grant to, to do uh, if you need to pay for these kind of things. Um, What's going to happen in these groups, though, is something that you're going to have to kind of lead them in the right direction for what you're looking for. Out of instinct and habit, these people who are coming to the library's focus group are going to want to start want to talk about the library. They're going to think hey, they want to know what I think of the library and they're going to start talking about there's this, It's just going to be what they want to do. And that's OK. You'll get to gather some good, okay information about that, but you do want to make sure they understand this is a community meeting. We're looking for what's going on in the community. Let them get it out of their system, tell you what's going on with the in the library, and then steer the conversation to, well, what about the community? What about, you know, and then get them talking about outside. We have here some sample questions that you can use to do that. Um, potential questions to use either in the focus groups and in interviews, surveys, all these different places. So they're going to want to tell you about the library, let them do it, and then start asking these kind of things. How satisfied are you living in? Are you with living in wherever, Lincoln? What do you like most? What do you like least? Get them talking about things that have nothing to do with the library. Um, um, so these are just some ideas that lead them that direction. Um, now, in, in some towns, you may have done this kind of thing before. Uh, there could have been a uh, quality of life survey done. That's something that the community, the city has already done. And that's great. If something's been done recently, just use the, that one already. Don't overwhelm the, your, your citizens with yet another focus group or another survey when they just did one for the community. Grab the one that's already been done and use it. And that's perfectly fine. Where's one that you? Okay. I'm looking at some people have some questions they typed in that I'm reading here. Oh, that's what I just said, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> I, I said it before I read the question. Sorry. Donna asked if there's been several community meetings held here locally outside of the walls topics. Can we just use the results of those meetings and other survey results? Yes, actually, absolutely. Yeah. That um don't reinvent the wheel if it's already been done. Don't overwhelm your community if they've already done something like this. If it hasn't been done, then maybe be the initiator of doing it um, in conjunction, you know, talk to the village board, other groups in town to um, have it done. Um, so another question here says, can we use a community focus group? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, because yeah, that's what I'm talking about here, the focus groups, the community focus groups, yes. If that's something else that I'm not understanding what you mean, please explain, because that's what I am talking about here is community focus groups, yeah. 
Um, another thing you can do is something called a key informant interview. This is with, um, okay, work a little better than a survey or a focus group because you can target a particular person who you want, someone who has influence and you want to ask them specific them specifically questions. Um, we're talking about the school superintendent, maybe um, a very involved parent, uh, religious leader in town of a, of a religious group, whoever, you know, will have, you know, is, is an influencer, one of those influencers. Um, in this case, it does not have to be an open meeting, like an open thing, like um, potentially your focus group, your survey, but you're specifically targeting, some, targeting someone um, to ask them those same questions about the community. Um, and when you are talking to someone who's the leader of a particular group, the school, the church, whatever, ask them things like, what does your group need from our town? Not from our library, although they may talk about that. Let them do that. What do you need from our town? What do you need? In, what's going on that you're not getting? Or what are you getting? What is going great? This is not all about being, you know, saying all the bad things <laughs> and everything is horrible. It's what things are going well as well as what you want. You can gather from these. Um, your usual old surveys um, that you can use those questions that we um, provided for. Um, you can do online surveys, uh, you know, put a website, a link on your website to something, some free survey service or a cheap survey service like SurveyMonkey or something. Uh, you can have flyers at your uh, circulation desk, uh, but you want to reach outside the library too. You want to, you know, put something in if there's a community newsletter or a church newsletter or uh, the school uh, information that they send home. Ask them, can we put this survey in there? Or can you include this link and say, hey, a library wants to know what you think. Go to this link to answer the survey. Uh, this is also something uh, with the surveys that you could uh, use. Um, I hate the word bribe, entice people, encourage people by offering a prize or a something like for uh, everyone who submits the survey will be entered into a drawing to get a $25 gift card to um, the local pub or to Amazon or whatever is something that you would you know, be able to give them as like a free prize. So a little enticement for them to participate. All right, any other questions about working with your community and getting this, doing this survey? Scott, do you have anything to share while I take a drink here about what I'm, anything to add? Now we do have in your packet of information that I gave you. Let me scroll through here. Oh, I'm way ahead of where I was here. In 2015, Richard did put together, there we go. He looked at the strategic plans of some communities and they're listed here. A whole bunch of communities that he looked, this is from 2015, and gathered what kind of things their community members were mentioning. So, and he has a little bar graph here that he put together of what was the most pop common thing that was mentioned. So this is just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that people may mention or that you can ask your community members about to maybe lead them into talking about these things to see what they think of it. Um, they've got business retention and recruitment, sustained projects, youth-centered, non-sports programs. So you can see the most popular ones going down to the least. So this is actually from other communities. And then we also have a list of these from the in with the actual numbers. So the most commonly mentioned things, uh, better affordable housing comes up a lot, downtown development, uh, sidewalk street and street improvement. Yes, that's also very, something mentioned a lot. So all the way down to the least mentioned ones, um, loose pets, retaining a post office, um, hospital and mental health care, pretty low. Um, bad cell phone service, yeah. So this just can give you an idea of what kinds of things maybe your community members may mention or the kind of things you want to look out for and see is this, are these things, this is what's happening in other state, other cities in Nebraska. Is this happening in our town? Is this something I need to ask people more about? Should I be asking, so what do you think of the sidewalks? Are they good? Are they bad? Do we need to, you know, or are we doing great? 
Um, and that's the thing I said, this does not have to be all bad, bad, bad. <laughs> it can, there is definitely uh, positive things you want to look for as well. <laughs> all right. So once you uh, have all of that information, um, this is when we get into our SWOT analysis. <clears throat> This is our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is the one, as I mentioned earlier, I've had people ask me this, what is something that people have the most trouble with? And this is one of the things, is separating out your internal environment from your external. And this is where, under internal, you're gonna be looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the library. For external, opportunities and threats in your community. When you're at this in this external section here, the library should not be mentioned at all. People may talk about it. They may have talked about it when you were surveying them or interviewing them or doing your focus groups, and that's great. But when you then come back and put together this, don't in mention any of those library-related things in the external environment. That's where you're talking about when you've led them beyond the library to talking about your community. Um, this is something for these SWATs, you may, some people may have seen this as one of those um, box with four squares in it, four parts to it, four quadrants, and that's your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Same kind of thing. We put kind of a little chart together here to give you some ideas of what would be in each of these areas. Um, this is definitely something for, to work on with your staff, with your board. Um, have them get together as well to do some brainstorming activities uh, to discuss this. Um, just start throwing things out. You can always refine it later if you, after you've you know gone through everything that they've said. Um, once you have all this kind of organized here, this is then going to feed into your goals and objectives and inform them and just you know help you figure out what is going to come out of all of this. Uh, so, for internal environment for the library strengths, um, human resources related things, the staff, are we, are, are staff doing good, are our volunteers, do we not have any volunteers? Uh, the building itself, is it ADA compliant, how well is the heating and air conditioning system, uh, is the size big enough, is it, do we need a bigger library? How are we doing in our technology? Do we got do we have new computers? Is our router working? Is our internet? Um, how's our funding doing? Yeah, are we, do we need more? Are we doing great? Are we maybe some of our funding is is okay? <clears throat> like we're getting a lot of money from the city, but we're not getting so much from the county, and they do come to us for things. That would be under the weaknesses side. Um, how's our collection doing? Do we need to weed more? Do we need to care to uh, collect more in this certain area? Um, your services and programs that you offer, um, all these different things. And then anything that's not listed here. Uh, strengths, it's, we have, this is a, a um, said often about libraries, librarians, we don't pat ourselves on the back often enough. We're afraid to say for some reason that you brag about what we've done. This is a place to do that. Pat yourself on the back. Brag about what you're doing. Then this is, you know, for you. But, you know, say all the great things. But also be honest with yourself and the weaknesses. Say, you know, we're really struggling here or we haven't done well enough here or the city or the county hasn't done well enough for us here. Be honest. Be aware, though, that all of these things, your staff, your board, um, they're going to see this. They're going to hear about this. So be diplomatic as well too, but you know, be honest with yourself and you know when you're doing this. Um, so this will be all about the library, and then you're going to turn around and look outside the library walls, not library at all, and look at the external environment. What's going on in my community, in my town? How's the economy doing? Is there a new employer in town that we need to see what we could do for? <gasps> did a did something recently close? Did the the factory, the plant recently close? Did you know something happen bad with that? How's our technology? Do we have a really good internet provider? Do we have really bad internet provider in town? Um, social climate community relations. Is there a new influx of a certain um, group in town? Uh, some people may think that there's, you know, a lot of Hispanics in town, but when you look at those demographics from your census data, it actually says a huge Vietnamese population has sprung up in town. You know, mark that here. Those could be opportunities. 
Um, so this part here, that's the end of the yeah, is all about what's happening in your town. Any questions about the SWOT analysis? Any thoughts on the kind of things that you would put into here? No? All right. Scott, are you still there? Hello? He hasn't said much, so I hope I'm doing okay here. <laughs> All right. So on to the next step. Okay. So once you've got your all of this information together, this is where we are then going to be um, analyzing all of this and figuring out what to do with it. Um, here also we have, and just go on a little aside here, um, this mission statement that I mentioned at the beginning as the first thing that is required uh, to be um, in your plan. Um, for the mission statement, this talks about how to do one and everything, and that's great. But uh, you probably you already should already have one that you put together when the first time through. And this is generally like your motto, as you can see here, uh, example for New York Public Library. The mission of the New York Public Library is to inspire lifelong learning, advance knowledge, and strengthen our communities. Nice, big, broad. Um, a few of these are a lot longer. Here's some from other town um, cities here in Nebraska. So. It may or the one you came up with before or something that you already had as a mission statement or a vision statement or your your motto of your library may still be accurate and fine and that's great you just say yes it's still ours it's still what we're using from what we came up with three years ago or what we already had but after going through all this evaluation and looking at all these things your your new census data what new things have happened in town and your community needs when you look at your SWAT you might come up with something that you think you know we need to tweak this a little we never mentioned lifelong learning and you know what we'd really like to be more the 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 place people go for that for ongoing you know personal development let's tweak something in our wording so you might make a change to this you might not but it's there for you to help you if you do want to so once we've got all this information, we're now we're getting into what is really uh, kind of the the end goal of all of this, the end results of, of all of the gathering all this information is developing your goals and objectives. What are you going to do now with all of this information? You've figured out your community, what's going on, what the needs are. Now this is the response. Community needs response planning is what we're talking about. Um, and this is where you come up with that. And there's a little uh, worksheet here that you can use where you can list the goal, the object objectives, um, what the need is, what you're going to do. Um, so you can use that as kind of a cheat sheet as you're going through this. Now, as I said, you only need two or three of these. Uh, that um, I think before three was what um, was, was required or re recommended. Um, it's going to depend on how much information you gather and what's going on in your community. Some people have asked, well, what if, do we have to come up with three new ones? What if we had, we had this previous one we were doing and we want to continue with it? It's still a good thing. That particular need is still in the community and it's going fine. That's okay to, on your new plan that you're putting together for me now, to say, um, we're going to continue with this, this goal that we came up with three years ago. You're going to want to explain that and say, and here's why. You can't just copy and paste and that's the goal. From the previous one, you are going to, you know, you will start with that, but then you want to say, and we're continuing this because based on the census data we've looked at or the community needs that we've, you know, learned about, it's still a thing. It's still needed, and we're going to continue with this program. Or it didn't work so well, but we want to try again. We want to try a different way. Maybe we tried to reach out to the senior center and have a senior story time. And we were going to do it every Saturday morning and bring our books there and do a talk. And it just was a flop. Uh, we've talked to the staff there and some of the members, the, the people living there, and said, you know what? We really, this would work better on like a Wednesday afternoon. That's fine. You're tweaking it. And that's what you're doing. You're still doing the same goal, the same project, but you're going to tweak it a bit. But you've gathered that information 
and updated it, and that's fine. So you will definitely come up with something new, hopefully, with your information, but it's okay if you continue with previous things. Um, and it's okay if things were a failure. That is okay as well. You you know, and that's something you could potentially report on this new plan is this particular service was a failure, but we've come up with a different thing completely. And that's fine. That's actually good. So uh, we have here a, a guide to help you with this is how to write SMART goals. Um, SMART is actually an acronym. It's not just telling you be smart. Um, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-framed. When you are looking at, and this is something you can use in anything in your life when you're trying to come up with a goal and a way of doing, you know, to accomplish something, you need to be specific and in, in about all these things and precise in order to come up with something you can actually do. So you can't have a goal in your plan here that says, we're going to attend more uh, village council meetings. Okay who's going to attend, how many, when are you going to start doing this, when are you going to look back and see what the effect was, did you get, you know, better results from the village board, did you, uh, you know, get them to come to the library to support the library better, you know, you're going to have to have some sort of follow-up to that. So you need to be very specific when you write these goals and um, objectives in your plan that you submit to me. So specific, what exactly are you going to do? Measurable, it's got to be something you can measure. Um, did we go and do it? So for the um, doing a new uh, story time for the seniors, we're going to um, bring so many books to the senior center. We're going to read to them and then we're going to leave some of the books behind and then come back and pick them up and see how many got checked out, see how many people attended. That's being something you can measurable. Something attainable. Don't think too far, too huge. I mean, think outside the box and get creative. Don't say we are going to have a senior program every Saturday morning and afternoon and Sunday morning and afternoon and bring all the books there, you know, being 50 books there for them to look at and, and, you know, make sure that it's something that they can actually do and use your staff's strengths to come up with some of these too. You know, do you have a really good adult services librarian and you want to have, you know, give them this kind of as, as a, a good thing program project for them to work on. Um, relevant that look at now this document here you'll see it mentions university this is something that we borrowed from UNL actually from the university so it mentions that but you can you know, use this for library what is your um, uh, mission statement of, of the library what have you and as far as relevant this is what did you come up with when you're looking at your serve your census data when you found out what your community needs were when you're out there looking at um, doing those surveys and everything. Is it relevant? Is it somewhere in there? That's what I'm going to look at when I look at these goals that you say you're going to do, um, these, these things you're going to do. I'm going to have to be able to see in your plan, here's the goal. Where is it previously mentioned in the plan why they came up with this? Is there something that shows that there is um, a need and you know, did some, is something mentioned in your in your in your focus groups about the senior center and needing more activities and the library providing them make sure there's a connection if you just come up with a goal that's completely out there and seems to be very separate and autonomous from anything that was mentioned in the plan that's going to jump out as a disconnect so you do need to have it be related um, and time framed something um, with certain specific dates. It might not necessarily always be deadlines and frequencies, but something where you've you know put a time frame on to it somehow. As in, within six months, we are going to create a senior story time program where we will go to the senior center twice a month on Saturday mornings and do a half hour reading um, of books and discuss or a book discussion group with the seniors. Um, and in a year after a year after that, we're going to then um, go back and evaluate it and see how it went. That's a good goal. Lots of details. Um, you can say relate really, because of the mentioned during our sir, our um, focus group that there was nothing going on. The, the seniors are bored. <laughs> um, we are doing this thing. So all that connects. See, everything connects is the idea. Um, and we've got some more information here about how to come up with these goals, um, some more specifics and assessing them and everything. So this will help you come up with something, not just that is 
quote unquote, acceptable to me when I read it and know exactly what you're doing, but that is actually useful for you. The idea is once you get to this point in your plan, you're actually coming up with things the library is going to do. New programs, new services, um, whatever. So this is something that is the idea of the ultimate goal and end result of this community needs response plan is the library is going to do something new or something different. Now, all of those things that you look at, that you come up with from your SWOT analysis, your surveys, um, you know, these sample questions that people ask you about, you're gonna come up with a huge list of things. Um, right here, like this this thing that, these, that Richard came up with. You're gonna come up with a lot of them. Most of them are not gonna be anything that you can somehow tweak to become a library program. Um, I'm not, you know, business retention, maybe the library could, you know, I, I, some of these, you know, better affordable housing. I'm not sure what would the library do about that. So not everything people talk about is anything you're going to be able to do something about, and that's fine, but you're going to, you know, report all this and say, here's the, you know, the 20 things that the community that they all, that they mentioned during our survey. And that's what you'll report in your, in your plan is here's the top 20 items that they mentioned but here's the two that the library can do something about. And that's what ends up in your goals. So you tell, tell me everything that you learned, all the stuff that people mentioned, everything that was in your SWOT analysis, write it up, all the things that seem to be jumping out of you as the most popular mentioned things, and then find the two or three that the library can actually do something with. <clears throat> Any questions about creating your goals? Ideas, thoughts? <clears throat> All right, the last part of your plan is the evaluation. And this is something pretty simple, um, probably the shortest part of your plan next to your mission statement. Um, just evaluating the plan itself, making sure that you take a look at it, that you have a group of people that are going to look at it, um, may maybe have the evaluation team be different people than we're on the planning team. So you have someone who is outside of the process looking in and saying, oh, actually, maybe you should have done this, or I think you could have, you know, why didn't this happen? So you want more eyes is, is better. Um, generally, what your evaluation on your, on your plan will say is um, every year um, the board or the whoever this team is will look at our uh, community's response plan and see how we're going. We'll see if this project that we, that the library excuse me, said they were going to do, they did do. Was it a success? Was it not? This plan is supposed to be a um, living, breathing thing, organism that you use regularly. You're going to go through all this process now and come up with all these things you can do, and then you're going to do them. C start these new programs, uh, offer this new service, and the what you put in your goals and your objectives is going to be something you're going to have to look back onto as you're creating this new service or new program, to make sure you're doing what you thought you would do. And then this evaluation is to look at that annually would be best, once a year at least, go back and say, so are we doing this thing? Now remember, this is a three-year, this is a minimum three-year plan. You'll notice some of our libraries have done longer, four or five, no more than five, I would say. So it doesn't have to be just on the three years, the same three years as your accreditation is up for. It can be for as long as works for your, for your um, organization for your library. Um, I wouldn't do more than five years because that's look, things change too much for that. Um, but you can do a plan anywhere from three, four to five years. But you should look at it regularly to see what's going. And some of your um, goals and objectives you come up with aren't necessarily going to happen in the next year. It could be, so first we're going to do this one and then two years from now we're going to start this program because it's going to take longer or to get things organized or just because one thing at a time, which is fine. This is a three years till your next accreditation is up. You can have this plan be four or five years long. And that's when you can have, you can say, you know, it is 2018 and 2020, we are going to do this particular program. And that's when we're going to start looking at it. So this is something you're going to want to look at regularly. Um, like I said, saying you look at it every year would be perfect just to make sure you're on track still. 
Now, we also have a summary here that you can use. And this is something, someone's, this is all the parts that would need to go into a plan. So this can kind of be your format of all the things that you need to have included. This is based off those seven criteria that are necessary, um, all these worksheets that we put together to help you come up with all this information. Um, so you could use this to you know, fill in each of these spots with all these things that you did. Who are the members of your team? Where's all that uh, demographic data, the needs that you came up with from your surveys or your um, focus groups? Uh, the SWOT analysis, their specific goals you came up with, and then what you're gonna, how you're going to evaluate it. So this is kind of a little, use this as my format for everything. So that, and that, and at the end of that, you have your plan. <laughs> Seems easy. I'm just talking about it an hour here, but yes, it does take some, some work. Um, so we have some questions uh, that came in here. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Ah, okay. Good question. Someone asked, if you go for a five-year plan, how does that work into the three years of accreditation? Do you reuse the same document um, with additions if they develop? Um, maybe. Depends. Uh, it's, you see it says here, this is back to the uh, accreditation application. Um, it says you have to have a plan that has been written or revised within the past three years. So if you do a plan now, and it's good for five years. When you come up for reaccreditation, re in it's good for five years. And when you come up for reaccreditation in three years, that plan is still good. You can just say, "Hey, here's the same one because it's a five-year plan, and that meets this criteria, and I'm good with it." Um, hopefully, you have if you've reviewed it annually, you might have additions or updates to it because you discovered something that needed to be tweaked as you were going. If there is, sure, you know, submit the plan, your original five-year plan, but with an addendum saying, however, and we discovered in practice that we had to change this particular program and here's what ended up happening. And, you know, a paragraph or two or a sentence or two on that. That would be if necessary. So that is how it would work if you did do a longer plan. As long as it's within the past three years, you can just submit it as the same one again. And that's fine because this is based on whatever you wanted your length of it to be, three, four, or five years. Uh, someone else wanted a reminder, your peer libraries, they are, be, they are right here once you are able to get into your application form. Now, the application form doesn't go live until July, but if you want to know now before you can get into your form and click this button to see that, contact Sam and he can get you a list of who your peer libraries are before this application is live on the website. All right, we are right at 3.01 p.m. on my clock here, which is almost exactly two hours from when we started. Um, and that is um, that is good. We're perfectly on time here. So that wraps up everything um, that I had, uh, everything I had for you today about communities response planning and your accreditation process. Um, any other any questions you have? I'll you know we'll let we'll let you ask questions as long as you need to. If you have anything you want to ask me now, we are not going to get cut off just because it's three o'clock here. Um, so if you have any questions you want to ask me now, um, get them typed into the question section. Uh, if you so I can answer them for you and for everyone else. If you don't have anything now, if as someone else said you're taking notes, trying to figure this out and think about it, that's fine. You guys know where to find me. Call me here at the commission. Email me. Um, email me, krista.porter at nebraska.gov. Uh, call me at the commission, 800-307-2665 is the 800 number here. Um, you can reach out to me at any time. I am the person now, since I am the library development director here, um, I look at your accreditation, evaluate that. I evaluate your community needs response plans. That's I'm the person for all this. Now, as you're working on your plan, if you want me to look at a draft of it when you're still in process, that's fine. If you, you know, it's not your final version, go ahead and send it to me. Um, and I will give you um, feedback and input on it, no problem. Um, October 1st is the deadline to get a version of this to me. That one could even be a draft 
specifically because after that I will still go back and forth with you on it. It'd be nice if it was more towards the end form version of it though, <laughs> closer to the final version than the first draft. I do not want, you know, first drafts in October, that's too late. We don't have time to do things then, but you know, leaning more towards the end, but we'll still come back to you. As I said, expiration is December 31st. That's when we have between October 1st and December 31st to go back and forth with you on your plan or your accreditation form and get everything taken care of before we and do the approval. All right, so we have some questions, some, um, oh, is it? Hang on. Somebody says that the CE hours for this says, oh, three hours. I apologize, that's not right. It's a two hour workshop, so it's a two hour CE credits available for this. I will fix that, that is a mistake on my part. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy, for letting me know. Um, you get one CE for one hour of um, workshop attendance. Our in-person workshops lasted three hours because they were longer in person. So I think this was an accidental carryover from that. I will fix that. <laughs> um, another question. Um, this is related to the surveys that we turn into you. Since we send them to you, do we need to keep records at our libraries too? If so, for how long? Oh, I don't need to see a copy of this. Uh, well. I don't need to see a copy of the surveys that you that you give out to your people to your community to have them take. Some people do include that as an example, saying, "Here's what we did." Um, but you don't have to necessarily send me that. Um, now, the the results of the survey, you're going to take everything that is is sent to you as answers and distill it down into what are the um, most commonly mentioned things and you know the, so so to figure out what are the needs what is mo being mentioned most often you're not going to um, list every single thing is it oh I'm sorry okay she says I'm sorry I meant the bibliostat surveys oh that um, Good question. I'm not sure if you need, we do keep all of that information for you. So um, the Bibliostat and everything, that's an online system that you log into. Uh, so that's all there and we do keep it all here. Um, I don't know if there is any rules about how long you have to keep that. I would say um, Sam Shaw would be the one to ask about that, but I can imagine, you know, we're keeping, we, we are definitely keeping it here. So if you ever did need any of that information, you could get it from here. Um, also, we do have um, on our website, we do, let's see, somewhere here is the link. Uh, we do post all of the information, there we go. The uh, information that you do submit. So you can find on, you can look on our website and find everything you've submitted and what everyone else has in big spreadsheets. I'm trying to find, here we go. I'm trying to find the right link that had the, I've this before. <laughs> Oh, here we go. 2016 data summary. Um, so you can look up, this is general information, but there's spreadsheets. You can find everything for, of yours online as well. Um, that would be a Sam question, unfortunately. Yeah. Send him a quick email and ask him if you guys are required to keep something or not. This is talking about the public library survey through Bibliostat. As I was saying, the surveys you do, if you do them for creating, coming up with your needs for your plan, um, some people do submit that as long with it saying, hey, here's what we asked, um, like a copy of the survey, but it's not required. Um, as long as you, you know, collect and distill out of it what um, the most common things that people mentioned for the purposes of um, coming up with our goals and objectives and things, then that's um, enough for me for this uh, plan. All right. We're a little after three o'clock. So any other last minute questions you wanna ask me right now while you've got me here? 
Um, otherwise, we will wrap up for today. Um, as I said, uh, the accreditation process will start July 1st. Everyone who is up for accreditation 2018 will get an email from me saying you've been invited to start applying. This would be everyone who's up for accreditation and anyone who has never been accredited before is invited um, to apply. Uh, look at the preview application to see what are the questions that you will be asked before the survey, before the application goes live for you. And start working on your your plan, your community's response plan, whenever you want. Start tomorrow. <laughs> um, you don't have to wait until the, you know, the July 1st. That's why we do this training now. Um, you can start working on this and thinking about this now. Now, as I said, you are all going through, everyone who's done this before is going through this for a second time. You do not have to completely rewrite you take your previous one and um, base work on that one as your basis. If you had one that previously that was approved, you're already you're you got a good setup. You just have to do some updating to it. So hopefully, this will be easier an easier go through than the last time. Um, and as I said, if you do not have a, your copy of yours still somewhere, your strategic plan. If you're not sure what. Um, where it is, if you're the new director, you don't know where it happened to it, send me an email and I can get you a copy of what we have as your most, of your last one. All right, so it looks like um, we are, hmm. Good to wrap up. So I'm just checking a few last minute things here. All right. All right. So I think we will wrap up for now. Thank you everyone for attending. I hope this was um, helpful to you. Start working on your plans. Start thinking about your accreditation. And call or email me with any questions you may have. All right. Bye-bye.